This is Elizabeth Estel, homeschool Christian mom, and I'm so glad you could join me today. I know I'm a minute late. I wasn't watching the clock when I was getting ready. And we've been talking this week about having a biblical worldview. And the reason that I keep going over this is because of this excellent, excellent textbook that has come out from BJU Homeschool. G BJU Press Homeschool, and they have a teacher's book, a student activities text, and uh, their student book, and it is so well put together. And I know I was reading part of it yesterday, but that's because they have taken great care to say things just right. And a lot of times we think, oh, well, does this word matter? This this word matter so much how I use it but we're not just talking about having a viewpoint we're talking about a biblical worldview the whole story of God's narrative with Christians throughout history the creation of man man's fall the curse of the earth um, both at the fall and then at the flood and then God's wonderful plan of redemption that he started way back from the beginning so that we could be right with him and that is so important and that's what we need to get across to our students now if you have a student who is really struggling and you think well this is going to be the key this will win their heart because this is a good logical progression of what we're of what the bible says um, I would say no you have a heart problem with your child you need to be on your knees praying for that child if you have done things that you haven't apologized for and you need to make changes in your family go ahead and do that a biblical worldview text is not going to change the heart of your child but if you have children who have a heart for the Lord if you have a heart for the Lord this textbook is going to make a difference because it gives you the tools you need and so you will be prepared to talk to people about the Lord. We need to engage the culture. That doesn't mean beating people over the head with the truth, but it means graciously being able to explain, yes, there are spiritual needs and the Bible has the answers. And sometimes I think maybe that we're a little bit uh, hesitant to say, hey, you have spiritual needs. I have spiritual needs and the Bible has the answers. Um, a lot of times we think, oh, in the past people were bolder or people cared more about Christianity or people were different kinds of people. But people are people and they need, they have spiritual needs and they need the Lord. So what has happened is sometimes our salt and our light haven't been used very well and we haven't made such a, an, um, an impact on society. And what I mean by that is Christianity definitely had an impact on society uh, and culture. Religious artwork was the artwork for hundreds of years. Um, artists were supported by the church to produce religious artwork. Music was religious music. Politicians were not afraid to say that I am basing what I'm my beliefs on what I believe about human nature and the Bible and our responsibilities to God. So what we want to do with this biblical worldview is not just have a better understanding of things so that we can explain it, not just understand the chain of all life is intrinsically valuable because God created it that means that any innocent life that is taken is valuable and you shouldn't murder people that means that people who were in charge of having people killed like in the Armenian genocide were wicked people we understand that whole chain but we're not just learning it for that reason we're learning it because we need to take action and make an impact on people around us and on our culture. And sometimes we've been slack about that. And I know people are hard. I deal with people all the time that are a little hard-hearted about things. And I bet you do too. 
But my one-on-one -on -one clients and the people that I work with in our co-op know that we still need to be engaging people and setting, uh, setting the stage so that when people do realize they have needs, when they do have people they want prayed for, when things bad are happening in their life, they know they can call us and they know that we'll have an answer for them. And if you don't feel like you have an answer for people now, this is a great super duper resource for you. Not just for your students, for you, so you have some answers. So we talked about having, that everybody has a perspective and worldview, and we talked about it depends on what lenses that you are looking through and how you're gonna explain it. And we're gonna go from a Bible first explanation. We're gonna say that we are not going to give into the world even a little and say, well, maybe uh, evolution could have been true a little bit, or maybe we'll just be quiet. We're gonna say, no, we're going from the Bible. We're taking a scriptural stand. And if you have a e level of expertise on something where you wanna engage the culture in that way because you have an expertise on carbon dating uh, fossils, that's fine. But you don't have to feel like that. If you don't have the right number of facts about something, it must mean that what you believe isn't true. Stick with the faith and believe in the Bible. God's word is able to have answers to the hard questions. But we're looking at things through the lens of faith. And they're looking at things through, the, through a different lens, a different world story. And so they come to a different conclusion. And I, I can't say that's okay. People re need to realize that God made the world. He's the creator. There was a fall, and now there can be redemption, and we can be right with God. And that goes through all, throughout all your subjects. Now, I do want to find one thing here, especially to read to you. <laughs> I'm so glad about having this book to go through. Uh, so it says, Christianity used to be salt and light on a grander scale than it is today. For all the sins and errors of the church through the centuries, times when its salt was way too bland and it hid its light under a basket, Christians still had a big impact on education, politics, art, science, and music. Christians truly made something of this world just as God intended. They did heady intellectual things like analyzing and evaluating, but they also acted. They did something with the biblical worldview. They proclaimed Christ's gospel and they wielded great societal influence. In fact, that influence is the very reason so many scientists are named Steve. And this goes back to Project Steve that they talk about in the beginning of the book. And it's sort of a funny marketing pro, uh, progress, you might say. Um, the National S Center for Science Education began Project Steve, and you have to hand it to them. It was very clever. They rounded up a thousand or so scientists named Steve to sign a statement expressing their support for evolution. And it says in part, evolution is a vital, well-supported, unifying principle of the biological sciences and the scientific evidence is overwhelmingly in favor of the idea that all living things share common ancestry. It is scientifically inappropriate and pedagogically irresponsible for creational pseudoscience to be introduced into the science curricula of our nation's public schools. And they found a thousand scientists named Steve that signed this thing. Wow, that's pretty impressive. Uh, I wouldn't have thought to go find all those people named Steve. And the marketing part of it is, well, if there's all these scientists that are named Steve, hey, if any of you are named Steve out there, say yes. Um, if all these scientists named Steve believe this, then imagine how many other scientists believe this. Scientists named Bob and Juan and Jose and uh, Vladimir. And so this must be the thing that is so important. You know, these scientists 
are great and they're uh, experts and their name's Steve and wow this is amazing but you know what is really amazing then the book brought this out in a very special way who is the first martyr S Stephen they stoned Stephen for his belief in Christ and the reason there's so many scientists named Steve is because a long time ago there was a man who believed in Jesus Christ and stood up for what he believed so if you can teach your students uh, the scriptural biblical worldview and help them have that foundation they can make a difference in society engage the culture and and lead it will lead to action on their part it's Ironic that a thousand unbelieving scientists bear the name of the first Christian to die for his faith. All because Christians in the past were salt and light, used by God to influence the pagan world around them. And there's no reason to think that you and your children couldn't take part in that by knowing a having a biblical worldview, being able to express it well, and taking action for the Lord. Now, if you're having trouble in your homeschooling, please message, please, please comment, join my Homeschool Christian Mom Facebook group and page. We'll get those questions answered for you because I don't want you to be a reluctant homeschooler. I want you to be successful and happy. I've been doing this for 25 years, which I know that's hard to believe. It's hard for me to believe too. And I have the resources and the energy and uh the knowledge to help you so you can be happy and successful with it too the world is out to get our kids we need them to be prepared we need to be prepared so that we can make a difference in society today now it's snowing here go ahead and and write in the comment box is what it's doing at your house and if you have a question go ahead and type it in I'm happy to help let's get some questions answered with that we want to make sure that we have the answers not not just the, a bible verse but we have the answers to the whole principle of why we're standing where we are and we're making a difference in the world the people that you meet that i won't ever meet the people i meet you won't ever meet that we're making an influence that we're saw and light in the world today thanks for joining me and um if you are interested in getting this biblical worldview text let me know i think i have a discount code for you and we'll see, get you on your way there. See you tomorrow. Thanks so much for joining me. Bye-bye.